What's that? Where did the floating green leaves come from again? They, well, they come from the bottom. They're, that leaf has one stem, and one stem, and it goes down into this uh, mass of spongy material uh, that's on the bottom. Well, where it actually originated from, I'm not sure. Cow belly, that's what it's called. So this other stuff that's on the trees, this other moss, I'm sure you guys have seen this all over the place before. This green, green is gray stuff. Uh, that's called Spanish moss. But here's the thing, it's not Spanish. <laughs> it's not a moss. <laughs> it's uh, a moss that will attach itself to something. Uh, and uh, whatever it's, it's attached to a tree, it's actually pulling some nutrients out of the tree. The Spanish moss uh, is just laying on the tree. It's not attached to it, not glued to it, stuck to it. It takes nothing from the tree. How it lives is through the nutrients that it pulls out of the air. It's an epiphyte plant. We've heard of epiphyte plants. So it doesn't need anything from the tree. It doesn't kill the tree. If the tree is uh, not so healthy and there's a lot of Spanish moss on it, uh, it might shade the leaves, uh, but it won't kill the tree. The reason we think they might have got that name Spanish moss is that the Spaniards came here uh, and were start taking things back to Spain and we think maybe they could have wrapped some of their uh, fragile items in the moss and they put it on their ships. <clears throat> could be true, could not be true, because the one thing that happens with Spanish moss is after you pick it, 10, 12 hours later, a little mite comes out of there and it burrows into your skin and it starts oh, to get wow. uh, red bugs or chickens. So now, just a little bit. Um, so we doubt that, you know, they, 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 they want to do that, they do something yeah. to cover up the Spanish moss on top of that. Uh, the other thing that uh, the theory is when the French were here and the Spanish were here and they were fighting to try to take control of like Florida, the French made fun of the Spaniards and said that they move so slow that the moss grows off their face. <laughs> uh, they have those big long, big long beards. <laughs> now, we've had people tell us on the trip, if you take fingernail polish, dab it uh, where that mite has gone into the skin and let it dry, you can kind of get it out of there. Pulls that little straw out. Spanish walk. Oh, anybody, here got, anybody here got a weird uncle? <laughs> Spanish moss also belongs to a genus that's called bromeliads. Bromeliads. There's another plant in that same family. It's a pineapple. So Spanish moss is the weird uncle. It's <laughs> also an epiphyte, so pineapple can technically grow on a tree. Huh. Yeah, technically grow on a tree. So there's another, another story about this area, South Carolina, Georgia uh, areas. A, a fellow came out here duck hunting. This guy was a pretty rich guy, pretty famous guy. His name was Henry Ford. I'm sure you've hmm. heard of Henry Ford. <laughs> he was down here with his buddies, and he's looking at these trees and looking at this moss, and he said, you know what? That stuff would be great, the stuff that seats in my cars. Mm -hmm. He got back to Michigan, he sent fellows down, they gathered it all up, and they actually started stuffing the seats in the cars. Mm -hmm. so about two weeks later, a saying came out of the Ford factory, it says, I'm itching to buy a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> true story, Google it, true story. So Henry, he was one of those guys that, uh, he invented the car, I mean, he made the car, right? So he was about to give up something free, basically. So he figured out if you, Put the stuff under high pressure steam that it would kill that mite and that bug in there. So he mm. continued using it for a long time. And if you ever see an old Model A or Model T in a junkyard, the seats are usually torn in that gray powdery stuff. Mm. And that's why it disintegrates that Spanish moss. Mm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Seven prongs. Remember, we said it was the seven prongs. If you get back here behind us, there's one offspring of uh, seven prongs. Up here in front of us is another. We're going to make a right hand turn. We're going to go on what's called Old River. Old River.
So what an alligator does is he's only going to take what he can take in one bite. It's not like a crocodile. A crocodile is not going to take a, you know, a crocodile will take a deer and kill it and then come back for it later. No, an alligator is going to take what it can take basically in one bite. So a small alligator like that six footer we saw, we saw his mouth. So what are we talking? That bird, rabbit, small raccoon. That kind of a thing. So even you're too big. Mm -hmm. You have to be like a giant alligator. <laughs> yeah, that's a giant alligator. And again, the reason is if they take and eat too much, they can't digest it fast enough, and they'll, so they'll, they'll overeat and kill them. So they're smart enough to know that you know, just that one bite, and they'll crunch it up with their teeth. They don't like chew it, but they got like 2,500 pounds of force coming down or the enemy comes up. And once they swallow it. And the gizzard in there starts to act on that food and kind of pull it and tear it. And also, something that this was recently discovered there's another valve uh, that opens in their heart that sends extra blood down into the digestive system and it helps speed up uh, those enzymes. A lot of times, when we see alligators throwing logs out here, we don't know they have eaten, just like us. We eat a good Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> We just want to veg out. <laughs> and they're getting out of the water into the sun so they can, again, take out the cabinet. So, I lost his boat back here. He went back there to repair his rudder and drove the boat back in too far and got stuck in the mud.
be a log sticking out of the water, a pretty good sized log. And we have seen a 12 footer mm -hmm. laying up on this log. So we'll see if he's still here. He's going to be in this area. Sometimes we can see him, sometimes he's just back in the swamp. I'm not seeing him. Is that a turtle? Mm. See this turtle right here. You see that turtle? You see that turtle? You see how he didn't slide up into the water? That's a different kind of turtle. You know what kind of turtle that is? That's a ninja turtle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ninja turtle. <laughs> we got mowed on up. So on this log uh, was a really good example. Uh, when I say alligator just doesn't eat whenever he sees something. We've seen the last time we saw this alligator, 12 foot on this log, and there was four turtles sitting on the log too. We've come, <laughs> we've come by and had a turtle sitting on top of the alligator. Oh, wow. We've come by and had a, a alligator's wow. head on top of a turtle. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's all, you know, it was they were like opportunists. Yeah, that never happened. Never happened. Like, the only thing that they could take. Ooh, bring it on up. Right there. Yeah. See him moving? That's about a tenth of alligator. Yeah. See that big log? Look to the left of it. He's heading towards the Yeah. <laughs> so you see what he did that's their natural behavior they want to get uh, away from us where is it it's in the grass we see a lot of alligators we're going to be back late today is that okay guys yeah. <laughs> nobody has lunch at like a certain time okay Oh yeah, there he is right there.
Yeah, that's a good that's a good size alligator now. Oh yeah, yeah. When their metabolism kicks up, we're not gonna we can't do this. It's a good time of year for to see alligators. Because you can actually stand here and study them practically. So what happens with this guy, when the tide goes out, typically he's gonna be over here in this grassy area with a cow lily. So the, what happens is the birds come over there, the blue herons, the white egrets, and so these the birds are in there, and it's only about a foot deep. So they're stalking, the birds are stalking the little fish, and they're moving real slow. And then while they're moving real slow, this guy is moving real slow too, stalking the bird. And we've actually seen one almost get a bird one day, almost. I saw one take one down in Adelaide. Oh really? They're fast. Very They're very fast. And then all the other alligators were chasing that one. Wow. There's a lot of motion going on in the water. This is pretty cool here. It's amazing how it's not scared. Yeah. Oh, we went under there, though. Now we went down. Okay. We'll leave alone. There we go. He's going to go back into the woods. The safest place for him to escape is back into the woods and try to hide. Uh, secondary, because we blocked his one escape route, and that's out into deep water. And they like to come out and they'll go into to deep water and they'll hold. Like I say, at this time of the year, they could probably stay in the water for a couple hours. Uh, when it's hot and they're all mobile and active, uh, they can maybe stay in for half an hour or an hour. here like to spend some time just hanging out watching the birds maybe taking some photographs you want a really really good vantage point to do this we've got a nice little house boat that we rent right here on the right side uh. Kids love it. Kids love it. It's got very slow swimming pools. It's got flow through ventilation. No Wi-Fi though. No Wi-Fi. Better Wi-Fi. So what's happening? This area here.
going off last year. And this has been a pretty viable company. Uh, and you know that because this is one of our three men called the Premier Nest where we have Osprey jewelry people just come out. And that's all they do, take pictures of the Osprey. So it's been a great nest. So we started up the tour of the season done. And there's nothing on top of that tree, but it's just flat. I'm like, how are they going to build a nest on top of the flat thing like that? So we watched. We watched them come back. They flew. They were sitting on the top thinking, oh, man, we got to get back to work. And you can see they're starting to build their nest. So I tell you, they come back to the same nest, the same tree, even if the nest or the tree gets destroyed, they always come back to the same nest. So this will be a good entry if you're looking for one on the chart. Go over here. This is, again, this is a natural. Two more hundreds from the Tupelo. Two of them are Tupelo hundreds. 